What does it mean when we say a set of vectors is linearly independent? Well, that basically means that these vectors are all necessary in some way, um, and that you can't form one just with a combination of the others. Let's look at a more formal definition. The formal definition you'll see in textbooks uh, will be if you have a linear combination of a set of vectors, say a1, v1, plus a2, v2, plus all the way up to an, vn, and you have that equal to zero. Now, it, these vectors are linearly independent if and only if um, the only way to make this equality true is if all of these a's are equal to zero. So what does that mean? What is that proving? Um, let's imagine that's not true. Um, we could say, um, if that wasn't true, we could add up any combination of these vectors and equal another one. And that's not what we want. We could have a1, v1, plus a2, v2, plus I'm going to throw in an a, n minus 1. And I'm actually going to subtract this to the other side of the equation. So now I have um, these set of vectors that are supposed to be linearly independent, but they're not in this case, um, with another vector on this side. Um, suppose I did divide everything by uh, minus a, a n, which is just a constant. That gives me v n equals uh, minus a 1 over a n v 1 minus a 2 over a n v 2 dot 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 plus or minus minus a to the n minus 1 over a n v n minus 1. And these are all just new constants now. Um, but here we have uh, a group of vectors where adding them all up equals another one of these vectors. And that is what we don't want. We don't want any of the vectors in our set to be equal to just a linear combination of the others. Um, so the, and the only way that this can be true is if all these a's are equal to zero. So how do we go about proving this? How do we go about saying that a set of vectors is linearly independent? Uh, it turns out that there are a number of ways to do that, but let's work through it with an example. Um, here I have four vectors, and I want to see if they are linear, linearly independent. That's 1, 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, 2, 1, minus 1, and 1, 2, 3. OK, to start out with, I have four vectors, and each vector is in R3. There are three components. So something's, go something's going to be up, and I'm going to tell you what. Um, if we think about the most basic linearly independent vectors I can think of, those would be uh, what are called the unit vectors, or the component vectors, or i, j, k. They look like 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And I think when looking at these vectors, it's the easiest to understand what linearly inde linear independence really is. Because as you can see, each of these vectors are extremely important. You can't get rid of any of them. Otherwise, you would just always have a 0 in one of those spots. Um, they're all necessary. and just with, with just these three, you can make any vector in R3 um, just by adding any constant in front of them. Um, but they're also, if you, add, if you add any other vector to these, it's going to be unnecessary because you can use these vectors to make any combination in R3. So these are the most basic linearly independent vectors, and there are only three of them. We can't add more or we get linearly, linear dependence. So because there are four vectors right here, I can just tell you right away, one of them is going to be irrelevant. Um, so I'm just going to get rid of this third one. So now I only have three vectors. This is a more legitimate problem. Um, are these three vectors linearly independent? So how do we go about finding this? We can look at, if we think about the equation like this, 
we'll have a1 times the vector 110 plus a2 times the vector 1 minus 1, 1 plus a3 times the vector 2, 1 minus 1 and set that equal to 0. So here we have basically a system of linear equations. We can make a coefficient matrix with this um, and solve for what a1, a2, and a3 will be and hopefully all of, the, all of them will be zero. So we have our three vectors right here in a coefficient matrix, uh, and we're setting them equal to the zero vector. Now, in a previous video, we talked about homogeneous systems. This is a homogeneous system. They're all equal to zero. So when I'm adding and subtracting, these aren't going to change. So I'm just not even going to write this section right here. I'm going to leave it like that. So we want to find the RREF and see what A1, A2, and A3 are equal to. I'm going to subtract the second row from this first row. That's zero. Minus one, minus one is minus two. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. I'm going to swap these two so I get a 1 in that spot. Okay, now I'm going to add this second row to this third row two times and that will give me a 0 right there. Negative 2 plus 1 plus 1 is 0, and negative 1 plus negative 1 plus negative 1, that'll be negative 3. Okay, so that last row, I can divide by negative 3, and I'm going to get a 1 there. With that 1, I can add this row here. I can add this row onto this row, and I'll get a 0 there. I'll get a 0 here. And now that I have these, I can add combinations of these to this row right here, and I'm eventually going to get zeros there as well. So I'm left with a beautiful identity matrix. And what that stands for is that A1, uh, remember my solution set, which I'm just excluding, but looks like this. That's A1 equals 0, A2 equals 0 and A3 equals 0, and those are the only solutions. Um, so that's way number one of verifying that these three vectors are linearly independent. Here's another way. Um, we can also find this with determinants. So I'll, And this only works because we have three vectors in R3, so that's going to be a square matrix, the coefficient matrix. And the trick is, if the determinant is not equal to zero, that means your vectors are linearly independent. So I'm going to show you this method as well. What is the determinant of this matrix? I need to do a cofactor expansion. Hopefully you remember how to do this. If you don't remember how to do determinants of uh, three by three matrices, I'll put the link to that video in the, uh, the comment box below. But I start with this first row. I have a one constant. I cross out this row uh, in that column and I get negative one, one, minus one. Uh, determinant signs, minus one, 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 minus one. Now I go down one, and now I have to subtract this one. I got the constant one. Crossing out this column and this row, I'm left with one, two, one, minus one. And this is a zero. Don't have to do anything. I am left with one times minus one minus one is one minus one. That's zero. And minus one. 
1 times minus 1 is minus 1, minus 2, that equals 0, minus, minus 3, or just 3. So, my determinant is 3, 3 is not 0, and according to my rules of linearly independence, that proves that these three vectors are linearly independent. Um, so that's two ways that you can prove it. Um, there are lots of other ways of thinking about it as well, but you'll find that these are the two fastest and easiest to understand ways. Um, so again, linear, li linear independence just means that you have a set of vectors and all of them are very necessary. You can't form one of them by linear combinations of the others. Um, and that's what makes linear independence important. Um, just knowing that your set of vectors is, each one of them is very necessary. Um, so I hope this was helpful to you. Um, check out the other videos and I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to check out the rest of the videos in this series and any of the other math related videos on our channel. If you're not subscribed to our channel, click this link right here. For more help with linear algebra, check out Worldwide Differential Equations with Linear Algebra by Robert McCohen or Elementary Linear Algebra by Bruce Cooperstein. Both are available at an affordable price in digital formats on our website. Just click this link right here.